Good evening, everyone. And in addition to Payal and me, there's, of course, Nina, Ritu, Shuli, Anjali, and Rimjim, who joined me in welcoming all of you here today. Uh, it really is a fascinating set of conversations that we have lined up. Uh, if there's a common thread between them, then it is about examining schisms, you know, schisms of the self, schisms between the world and us, society and us, culture and ourselves. Uh, and the first speaker, of course, is about chasing excellence in, in its myriad forms. Shijat Khan is the seventh generation of sitaris players, legendary players from the Imdad Khana, uh, Khan uh, Gharana. And his father, of course, is the legendary Vilayat Khan. So while Shijat Khan himself is widely deemed as perhaps the best sitarist of his generation, his legacy has been both a blessing and a curse as he has struggled to find his identity separate from the seven generations that went before him. And so it really has been a struggle not just for voice, but for identity, for excellence, a struggle with the sitar, which is an entire journey in itself, but then also a struggle with the father and a, and, a, and a lineage. So today, we will be privileged to hear the price of divinity. We often say, and we've said it before when we had Zakir Hussain, that music really is the language of divinity, but there's a high price to pay for being the purveyor of that language. We enjoy it, we enjoy the experience, we don't often get a, a insight into what goes into it. So today, we are very, very privileged to have Shujat here, to hear about the personal journey, both with his instrument and his lineage. And he's, of course, you know, I, I, I never do the formal biography of the awards they've won and all of that because that's a quick Google search. But there's definitely one to say that, you know, he was nominated for a Grammy uh, in 2004. Uh, for, and he's been known for bringing fusion and for bringing a kind of, uh, you know, folk influence, singing with the sitar. There are many innovations that he's done to really arrive at his own identity. But that's to shortcut the conversation that we would want to have with him. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Shijat Khan. Shijat, as I said, we uh, celebrate your music, but uh, you know, it, it's been both a struggle with the instrument and your lineage. There's a, a sort of very quotable quote you once gave to someone else, uh, so I'm cheating from it, where you said that you grew up with this idea that everyone had of you, that you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. But what no one asked was whether that silver spoon had kheer in it or karela in it. <laughs> so, uh, so before we delve into that particular journey, Shujat, in this struggle for identity, and we'll, we'll unpack that, can you share with us when you first, you know, what was that incident or that moment or that particular concert, or could be anything, someone someone said to you, where you finally felt you'd broken free and you had arrived at being Shujat Khan? Yes, uh, I, I haven't felt that yet. No, it's, uh, in a way, I'm happy. Uh, I'm, it's a great honor to be a part of... Uh, this great heritage and this great lineage and to be the son of Ustad Vilayat Khan. It's some, how many people get that opportunity? So I'm very happy. Uh, and I think there is not, I don't remember a certain thing or a time or a period where I realized that, yeah, okay, now people accept me for who I am. I think um, it's been gradual. It's taken its time and it takes time. Uh, where uh, we've got to a point where at least people, all of you who are here, hopefully, are here. Um, okay, we'll spend the evening, meet friends, the thing. But it's for Shujat Khan, because Vilayat Khan Sahib is not here anymore. And if he was there, sure, we would have all got together to listen to him. But uh, to understand that uh, I have also spent a huge amount of, of time and energy and work and hard work in my life, to get across to the world that I am also a musician and I have my own personality and character uh, to bring into my music and give to the world. So I think it has happened over a period of time. And as you said, uh, it's, it's been difficult at, at times, but, but it's okay, we, we manage. Shudat, it's an understatement to say today you have an identity and we're all here to celebrate you. You know, uh, your voice is sublime, your, the, the way you have innovated 
in creating an identity around the sitar. We'll come to that as well. But first, yes, this journey that you had to walk. Um, you know, it was almost predestined before you were even born. Your father had decided that you were going to be a sitarist. Uh, it, you know, we are, we are now, now talking of gene-edited babies, but you were a gene-edited baby, you know. <laughs> so uh, what, what, what was it like to be born into this? And, you know, from the age of three, you were already training. Can you talk about those early years? Uh, what was your relationship with your father and the music? Um. I talk often about lineage and what it means to be to be a person born into this family or families like this. Um, I'll just give you a small example of, of what we have to go through. Even before we are born, I mean, <laughs> after I'm born is a different story. Yeah, but even before, uh, for some reason, my father was convinced, was alag zamana tha, convinced that when my mother announced that she was pregnant and with a child, he said, Bada chai, to iska naam shujat hoega and to sitar bajayega. Everything was set up. Ah, there was no, no thought process of or the possibility that it could be a girl. Ye bhi ho sakta hai. Nein, nein, hoga. Yeah? And he was very happy that I had uh, sisters um, after me and that was all okay. But how is it possible for my firstborn not to be a son, A, not to play the sitar, B, and, and follow the same, you know, the same lines that, that, that we do. So the pressure was put on me even before I was born. It started there. Uh, there are stories, interesting stories of my mother, seven, eight months pregnant, and look at my size, so she must be having a difficult time anyway, even then. <laughs> Uh, there are pictures. Even your size was predetermined. <laughs> <laughs> so there are pictures of, of uh, her going to concerts. She's sitting in concerts. And uh, the, 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 the front half of the concert had this floor sitting, or gadde or takye. So she's sitting there with all these pillows around her. And uh, you can see she's obviously in extreme amount of distress, first of all. But being convinced that, oh, he's carrying a son and the child is already listening to music. So, uh, because he should listen to music. Then, after he was born, realizing that he wanted to, because it was important uh, that I be a, a musician and a sitarist, to move away from, he's, my father used to live in Bombay, he had a flourishing career in, in between Bombay and Calcutta, and said, no, I'm going to drop everything when I was about five or six and move to Simla, go all the way into the mountains, he bought a beautiful place, uh, it was a summer palace of a king, and, and he settled there. And people asked him, why are you doing this? And I think one of the reasons for him was, he wanted to be in a place where I would have no connection with the world, literally. No, no, no telephone, no TV, no radio, nothing. For, so it was school and music. So uh, it is, it, in. There are two different ways. One is, of course, to understand that um, if you want to be, if you want to achieve excellence or really pursue excellence, there are certain things that you have to leave. Jusko uh, kurbani There are so many things that uh, uh, we can't have. Uh, for example, a childhood. Sometimes you have possibilities of having a great life, but childhood may, might not be that easy. So there have been difficult times, but again, um, as you all would know, the, the, the Eastern culture, uh, the, the Far Eastern culture of music, you see all over the world, all the greatest philharmonics or, or um, orchestras all over the world, their soloists are always Asians, you know, playing Western classical music, most of them. Why? Because they believe that it's okay. It's okay to be pursuing something. If you tell, tell a nine-year-old child, please practice more than three hours, they'll call the police. Uh, in, in, in America and England, this happens all the time. You agree? Uh, uh, yes, uh, someone will call and say, I'm being tortured by my parents. So, um, again, just... Uh, so, uh, uh, Vilayat Khan Saab would have been uh, spending oh. a lifetime in jail. <laughs> you know? It, it, it seems all important people end up in jail anyway nowadays. <laughs> it, it, 
इट्स अ प्री रेक्विजिट और रन अवे एंटी का जाके बैठ जाओ उसमें क्या प्रॉब्लम है <laughs> but uh, should i like you were saying there's almost a archetype to this you know particularly in in classical music because the demands of the music itself hmm. is so uh, you know is so high the standard of that you have to start young to be able to become a maestro so there's already that archetype of the mus- relationship between the uh, someone who will become a maestro and the music but say for instance zakir hussain you know had also a, a legacy and a father who was teaching him uh the tabla at age 3 but that doesn't seem as uh, schism the relationship as say yours was with abilayat khan saab so was that more his personality or is it really the burden of the expectation you know um two things one uh there is a possibility that uh, zakir bhai take example went through all this but doesn't want to talk about it it's very possible uh the second possibility is is um uh when they were going through this there was an issue of of first of all knowing that if you jump out of a family thing what else are you going to do so the avenues at that time specifically for tabla players was very very small um i grew up in a, in a slightly different way my father i mean his his enjoyment of music was there but apart from that he'd given us a understanding of life that there is more to life than just music he was very articulate enjoyed lots of things so i grew up understanding that uh, music is a part of my life but it's it doesn't it's not my whole life uh, i enjoy meeting people spending time my family my friends we do different things so there is a possibility that the thought process was the same but Uh, i think it's um, honestly if i honestly asked any growing young man whether he has differences of opinions with his father no one all of you men sitting here is anyone going to say you never had differences of opinion with your father uh, it was for me it was heightened because my father was uh, had extreme demands from me not only as a musician but also as as a person and what he wanted me to do and how he wanted me to live my life so uh, we came to a point where i had to keep two different relationships going one was teacher and student which we never had a problem i think of ustad vilayat khan sahab as being not one of the the greatest musician of the last era i think i honestly believe that and a lot of people who understand music enjoy it who is and it's it's okay that is how high i hold in in my esteem but then as a father and son we had our issues because his expectations from me were huge and i couldn't live up to them and i wanted to do different things so uh, i was leading two different paths whenever we met musically we played concerts together when i was learning from him we were talking about music there was just submission as a human being as a as a as a person i wanted to be my own person so i've always been a uh, uh, slightly rebellious but it's not without a cause and it's it's not n- uh, non directional there is a thought process behind it and this was i was ready to play music i was ready to be the seventh generation i i would give my whole life to music but i'm not going to give up who i am as a person that was a little issue but it's okay it's okay we we did it <laughs> So we'll move quickly to the music but just to you know finish uh, exploring the, the, the making of you shujaat in in so many ways uh, was that you know you were you said you mentioned that you were in this palace in shimla and it had 18 or 28 rooms you know on google you can never be sure <laughs> <laughs> so sorry if i have it wrong uh, let's go with 28 sounds better sounds better <laughs> well and four mercedes some bmws mm. yeah, you know. yeah it sounds good let's go with it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but yet within that you were very isolated and you know we, w- we, you mentioned a lot about your father but their marriage actually broke up uh, your mother uh, and he divorced at the age of 11 you know so what was the influence of your mother did you have access to her afterwards uh, you know i had access to no one i'm sorry i i'm i'm, I'm not trying to um, garner any sympathy here i'm not here for that uh, any if i start talking about unhappy parts of my life everyone's going to say ah, this is not correct i mean i have a beautiful life 
I, I, have, I have achieved a lot of success, much more than my musical ability. I've got a lot of love, affection, friendship, uh, respect from, from the whole world. And I'm, I'm living a charmed, really wonderful existence. Uh, but um, as, like I said, without wanting to get hold of people's We're talking emotions. about the child's journey, so don't was, caveat it. I was um, nine. I was three when I started practicing. Six, I, was, I made my first concert. Bombay, Jangir Art Gallery. People were here, they listened to it, and I played my first concert. So I was already playing music. But when I was eight, nine, my parents started having problems. Now again, that would have been a good time if I was in the city, and we had lots of friends and family, then, oh, it would have been kind of okay. But because we were isolated, I was there, I was alone. And the, the issues of what was happening between my parents was in my face every day. They probably at that time didn't understand. My father was going through a phase where he was enjoying his friends, alcohol, and traveling, you know, making, making a name for himself. My mother was busy with her life, uh, her friends, uh, trying to keep afloat somehow. You're, you're stuck. She didn't, I don't think she wanted to go to Simla. Vilayat Khan Sahib thought, chalo bhai, tomorrow if I ask Parveen, I said, let's go and live in Rewadi. I don't think she'll be very happy. <laughs> so, um, so, <laughs> so it was really difficult. I, I was, uh, and that, I, that's a reflection on uh, who Shujat is as a man then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it was really difficult that time. Uh, so at nine, when all these fights and unhappiness going on at home, uh, I didn't know I was uh, young enough not to be not, not, not to be able to deal with it, but old enough to understand what was going on. So I think my music and my practice became an avenue of uh, an exit avenue where every time I felt really unhappy, I heard evening used to come and I hear I heard there was a possibility I could start drinking or fighting or whatever it is if it came to me, then for me, to start playing my music or practicing that, that, that frustration, that anger, that unhappiness, whatever, was in through the music. That way, it helped to do one thing. I became technically really good because I was practicing at 9, 10, 11, I was five hours a day, six hours a day, seven hours a day, sometimes all night because that was my, 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 my work, is to go to school and play practice. Those are the two things. So I became really, really very good. But emotionally, it took time for me to become a better musician because uh, I had spent a lot of time just becoming technically good. And, but I grew up enough in Simla to start looking around and seeing, imbibing the changing of seasons, uh, the different colors, the co color of autumn, winter, summer, spring, uh, hearing sounds of, of the folk music from that part of the world. And I think all that put together, that seeped into me, comes out in my music today. It's like a story, I tell you, of all the experiences I have seen and heard and felt through my life. So, Shujat, you, you ran away from home finally at 15 or, again, I, I hope I have the date or the age correct. It sounds good at 15. <laughs> it, may have been, it may have been at 18. <laughs> But uh, so again, I want to understand what that final moment of rupture, you know, that's a very young age to leave such a towering father and to move away. Like you said, you know, there's that fear of lo losing a legacy, of losing a parent, a mentor, a teacher. So it would have been a very, very difficult decision and you were alone. So I want to come to that. But before that, you know, you've, you've spoken about the uh, influence of folk music in, in making you and soothing you and then it really seeped into your... Uh, uh, my, you know, your family. emotional mm -hmm. development as a musician. Mm -hmm. So would you share a song for us, you know, bring in the oral atmosphere <laughs> that you grew up in? Um, one of the, one of the, it's, a, it's like a little lullaby I heard at that time. Let me just share it with you. <clears throat> mm. Mm-hmm. 
आजार निंदिया आ क्यों ना जा आजार निंदिया आ क्यों ना जा मेरे जाना को सुला क्यों ना जा आजार निंदिया क्यों ना जा मेरे जाना को सुला क्यों ना जा जरी निंदिया आ जा सपनों के गांव में लेके चलू लेके चलू तारों की छाव में लेके चलू लेके चलू आ जा रे निंदिया आ क्यों ना जा मेरे जाना को सुला क्यों ना जा मैं तो मैं तो बचपन से यही कहता चले आ रहा हूँ म्यूजिशियंस को बात बात मत करवाया करो म्यूजिक म्यूजिक सुन लो उसके बाद आगे अब ऐसे इनविटेशन दे रहे हैं आप तो कैन वी गेट ग्रीडी एंड हैव अनदर वन गिव अस अनदर वन देन चलिए अब आगे कोई ऐसा मोड आएगा डिस्कशन में तो फट से बोलो ना ठीक है बट अगेन इज इट राइट दैट यू नो इन दिस काइंड ऑफ इमोशनल एरिडिटी दैट यू वर ग्रोइंग अप इन दैट इन फैक्ट अ लॉट ऑफ द इवन दिस म्यूजिक वाज फिल्टरिंग इनटू यू थ्रू द हाउस हेल्प द लेडी हु वाज लुकिंग आफ्टर यू यस आई हैड आई हैड सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू माय गवर्नेंस वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट पीपल इन माय लाइफ रत्ना her name was ratna she was from nepal and um, she was my anchor for all this time that we grew up i was some i was very very close to her obviously and she was with me each hour each minute that i was at home so i i that it's it's a very important um, it's very difficult for me to explain how she influenced my life but these are all little songs probably uh, that uh, she must have sung while 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 uh, but um, at that time we didn't have cell phones like we would we would be talking right now on a cell phone right in the middle of it but busy hote hain log but it's okay <laughs> and, and another one rings do do put your phones off so um, you know let's move to the music and but before that you know the the many generations we've talked about the emotional uh, price that it took from you but if you talk of the legacy what was would you be able to kind of sign post for us what each generation did to the sitar you know including yourself you know yeah. what what did you do what did your grandfather do what did your father do without going uh, too deeply into in technical details let's just say <clears throat> before um seven gen- let me say it's uh, very easy jab mujhe koi puchte hain how many generations of are you what is your lineage so uh, my answer is i'm the seventh so which is pretty impressive seventh everyone doing the same thing so ek dafa i was giving an interview we were uh, at a uh, somewhere and i had a very major tabla player from our times he was sitting in with me and i was london or some, somewhere so i was asked kisne pucha bhai what uh, how, how many generations of musician so i said i'm seven seven generation musician oh re very good this is wonderful aha wow to phir kisi ne unse bhi puch liya Oh, he was sitting next to me. He says, "And and sir, uh, how many generations of musicians are you from?" So I came like a thirty-three. So, कोई हिसाब thirty-three generations where the tabla didn't exist. I mean, really. So, एक 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 छोड़ो छोड़ा अरे एक छोड़ो तो इतना कि दूसरा लपेट सक गया बहुत साला. थर्टी 
doesn't matter at the end of the day, first, first thing, it doesn't matter how many generations or what great lineage I come from. If I sit on the stage with my sitar and I can't make you happy, then it really doesn't matter. I am a child of Mughal or a child of Modi. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You have to get up there as a musician and make us happy. But a very interesting thing, when we come down to facts, I want to tell you something about it. When you're talking to someone and you're talking to someone and you're seeing that it's long and long, then ask about something and then they will... So if I say seven generations, now the first... We are from a land-owning family. We were a land-owning family. Uh, Rajput. So the first person who started playing a little bit of music, his name was Surjan Singh. Tha. We, we didn't change the names. Sahib Dad Khan Sahib. Tha. And the first person was Surjan Singh. Singh naam tha. He never changed his name. But what happened is he fell in love with a daughter of a caravan. Caravans came from Ghazni from there. For, for, for he fell in love, and then he said, I want to marry her, and that guy said, the father said, Nika Vika karna padega. So he said, okay, and I'm not very fond of this Zamindari stuff anymore. And so he got married to him and changed his religion. And so, but interesting, Lana, so first three names, uh, Turab Khan, Sahibdad Khan, and Surjan Singh, are names that I can throw out. I don't, I couldn't throw out 33 names also. Ravi Chopra, Anand Bakshi, kuch bhi thode. But, but four, if I go up to four, Shujaat, Vilayat Khan, Inayat Khan, and Imdad Khan, interestingly enough, how, do we, how is there proof that they were great musicians of their time? Mine is the only family in this country where we have four generations of commercially recorded music. So that is a, that's a good thing. That's a, that's a, Imdad Khan sahab, my great grandfather, us time sirf 78 RPMs banta tha. His masters was a kutte pe bethe hoye. So 78, and that also you had to be extremely successful to have even one recording out. And he had more than four. Inayat Khan sahab had many. Vilayat Khan sahab had maybe about 80 recordings. I have 100 and God knows how many. So the thing is, this way when I say seven, it has some kind of meaning. Just, just to tell you that uh, I at least noticed that Vilayat Khan Saab had 80, you have 100. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just no, it's so, so easy to make CDs nowadays. Vilayat Khan Saab ke time pe, people had to come and request him, will you make a CD? Uh, uh, yes, yes, I will. LP banayenge, haan banayenge. But studio used to be uh, in, in Calcutta. Achha, I studio jaunga, but I'll go at 11 o'clock at night. Bhai, why? What about the daytime? No, 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 my mood is there. 11 o'clock at night, he'll go to a studio. At 4 o'clock in the morning, he'll say, Aaj mood nahi hai. <laughs> so this was the thing. He made you work to understand that you really desired his music. Aaj ye hai, I can sit and make a studio in, and, and, and make a recording in my bedroom. So it's like 33 generations. Same thing. <laughs> You know, while you were speaking of him uh, and his uh, commitment to his music, uh, is it true that, you know, just again to use a metaphor, that even if the Mughal Azam himself was outside his door, but if Vilayat Khan Saab did not like him or felt that he did not understand his music, he wouldn't play for him? Is, is this, is, this is absolutely true. My father has always been he's made out to be a, you know, for lack of a better word, temperamental. He was a very temperamental person, he was a very angry person. Truthfully, when you look at his life from close, temperamental, why? Why? There was nothing. He was, never, he was never rude. He was one of the most charming, elegant, intelligent, wonderful human beings when you met him. And generous to her. But he did not suffer fools easily, which we have to do. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> just, just, just to... Uh... There is, I have, I have got, I have got, some, if we have time later, I've, I've got some text messages. The other day I was playing a concert and I came down and someone wrote to me, Khan Sahib, uh, there is a text message. I, I actually, I will uh, show it to you. He, is there a record? Is there a, is there a rag? I was playing different rags. I will explain. Is there a rag 
for a pregnant woman. <laughs> so I said, Bhaiya, dekho, I don't know. Pregnant karne ke liye raag hai. <laughs> उसके बाद मुझे नहीं बट क्वेश्चन तो सुना एंड इफ विलायत खान साहब यूज टू टू गेट रियली अपसेट ये क्या बेहूदी बकवास है बाहर निकालो इसको ये बकवास पूछो आई हैव टू सफर एंड से जी जी नहीं ऐसा कोई राग नहीं है So, um, you know, again, I did want to know about that inflection point at 15. You know what what helped you leave. But before that, so that we, we don't run out of time, you know, you've said somewhere again that, say, for instance, Rag Bhairavi is something that absolutely has the khushbu of Vilayat Khan Sahib in it. True. And even when you play it today, his khushbu lingers. True. But is yeah. is there a rag that you have completely owned as your as yours, or you know, I know that Kabir and Khusru uh, uh, are big influences for you. Yeah. Would you sing us something from there? And also, is hmm. there a rag that you feel you own? No, ji. Oh, is that a bad question? Like no, a no, pregnancy no, 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 no. That the only difference, uh, Shama, I would make is that the word you, rag you own. Uske own ke jagah kar dunga rag that you desperately enjoy and embrace. Yeah. Um, there are um, as a, uh, as a musician, as a performer, we perform between ten and fifteen rags. हम दस पंद्रह राग बजाते हैं बिकॉज वी हैव टू डिवेलप ईच राग ओवर ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम देन वी नो अनदर फिफ्टी सिक्सटी राग वी नो अबाउट इट एंड वी कैन परफॉर्म दैम ऑल्सो इट्स नॉट दैट बट लाइक ए पर्सन हु कम्स आउट विद एन एम ए डिग्री फ्रॉम और पी एच डी फ्रॉम प्रयाग और वट एवर दे नो साढ़े पाँच सौ राग वो मेरे को कोई सीखने आया बच्चा तो ऐसे आज क्या सीखोगे इसे आई नो फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी राग आप क्या सिखा सकते हो तो पहले हाथ जोड़ लेता हूँ सो so it, it it happens too so um, yaman jinjoti these are rags of my gharana which i have developed and i feel very deeply with um but it's a rag where it's not only to do with uh, sitar or so my there are compositions that we have uh, let me uh, do tell lines so nire pam dham gsa धानी रे पवन धपम रे पम गरनी रे मग प्यार का जज नया रंग दिखा देता है प्यार का जज नया रंग दिखा देता है अजनबी चेहरे को महबूब बना देता है प्यार का जज्ब नया रंग दिखा देता है अपने चेहरे के किसे दाग नजर आते अपने चेहरे के किसे दाग नजर आते वक्त हर शख्स को आईना दिखा देता है अजनबी चेहरे को महबूब बना देता है प्यार का जज्बा नया रंग दिखा देता है तो ये भी अमन है Thank you. We are we're going to run out of time soon, Shujat. So uh, you know, let me, but we still want to hear some more. So uh, quickly, that inflection point of when you left, and if you could quickly share that anecdote about you running away to America and singing, uh, hoodwinking the Spanish with Hindi <laughs> songs. <laughs> I I sp started spending a lot of time away from home. From 15, 16, was school. Kisi tarah khatam kya. So. Uh, 
a lot of the, I used to get together with my father every now and then because uh, musically we did work together. But also there were external issues happening. My, I, my, by, ne by then I had a stepmother and her family and other. So whenever I got close to my father, other things started happening in the family. Yeah, all, all big families, all of you are rich people. Aapke family mein sa, tamashe to chalte hi honge na. Oh, come on, admit it, yaar. But, but just, so these little things. And so th there were people who didn't want me to be close to my father. So there were forces working in that place. It's again, sad, happy, that's my destiny and I have to accept it. Sure. So I started traveling to get away from him. Uh, do whatever to earn a living. So I used to go to the studios and, and do background music, play the sitar. I did a lot of work with R.D. Burman, with Lakshmi Khan, Pyarelal. It was a wonderful time and they treated me so well and I, I used to give them a lot of you know, fun times. I did that. I traveled all over India, then I traveled, started traveling out of the country. And then I used to make money whichever way was possible. So one of those things that, that uh, I did was I found a job in upscale, uh, you know Manhattan, and the lower Manhattan is, is, is all different kinds of people, but the upper side was only for the rich white people. So they had, at that time, I'm talking about seven, late 70s, had started coming up with restaurants in that part. And one of them was a Spanish restaurant. So I got a job there to be a singer. So I used to, I used to play the guitar, so I could play the guitar and sing in a Spanish restaurant because the clientele was only white. So I used to sing Hindi songs. <laughs> Doesn't it sound Spanish? For example, very dramatic, flamenco. Da 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 <laughs> And I could sing it with words. Na tum hume jano Na hum tum hume jane Magar lagta hai kuch aisa Mera handan So, the problem was that every now and then, some authentic people walked in. <laughs> so, the person at the door, he was told, that if someone when they come, or if he knows that the Spanish, then tell Shujaat. So, as soon as he told me, I said, I'm going to take a break now. A break meant then I had to go and wash dishes at the back. But it was a beautiful time. I picked fruit, I did things. I, it, was, it was a, a time I got to learn, a time I got to connect with people and understand. And, and, and a bit, of course, there was a lot of Spanish? You asked me. And I said, yes, in Spain there are different dialects. Where are you from? And I said, no, no, this is Barcelona. This is Bilbao, North. It's Catalan. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a wonderful time and, and uh, I have no shame. <laughs> so, Shijat, uh, just in terms of musical influences, what were you listening to then or what do you listen to now, you know, uh, which is your kind of universe of music? My, my what do you like listening to? Again, my, my home, I, I, don't have a good, I don't have a good music system at home. None, I don't. I have a music room. My wife made a beautiful home for me, and she made this beautiful music room which looks out into the garden and lots of trees around with imagination, she and this architect. So I don't use it. So I realized after all this, because the society teaches us, you know, bows. You speaker, then you're an idiot. So we are pushed by, by the system. Um, yeah, you will make better music. But that's not true. People make music on the streets. 
So uh, I realize that all the music that I hear or I create or I make or I do or I perform is all in here and a little bit in here. So uh, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm, I walk around and, and, I, and my, my fingers every one now and then, other day I was uh, going through my yearly tests to check karate. Uh, so they were going to do that diabetes, check where corner. So I was sitting there and I without thinking I do this. Sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa these fingers. So if I'm singing a song, na tum ha meja pa ni re sa ni sa ni dha ni sa ni sa re sa ni sa ni dha pa ni ni sa dha ni pa ni re pa ma ga re sa pa ni re. So I is pe gana gata hu. अब वो मैं उधर ऐसे कर रहा था वो चेक कर रहा था तो कहने लगे जी आपका उंगली नम हो रही तो आप तो बिल्कुल इधर ले लो सो यू नो वी हैव इन रीच दैट इन्फ्लेक्शन पॉइंट बट लाइक आई सेड डू ट्रीट अस टू समथिंग फ्रॉम यू नो फ्रॉम कबीर और खुशरू बिकॉज़ दे आर आप द द रीजन अगेन फ्रॉम अदर रीजन आई आई एंजॉय कबीर एंड खुशरू अगेन इज इज बिकॉज़ दे आर वेरी सिंपल I I was talking to you just now. I don't read books, and I am I I don't understand my Christian spirituality. I am not a guru. I am not a teacher. 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 I am not I, and meditation, I have, I have, I have, I have, let's say I have lovely friends, I have my family, I have my dogs, I have my home. It's me kuch karne ka, but as jaise hai ki, I like them because they're very simple. Aapko ek do couplet sunata hoon. Sagama bari gama dha bari bari gama re ni pavani re puma ga sa. पत्ता बोला वृक्ष से सुनो वृक्ष बन रहा है अब के पत झड़ना मिले अब के पत झड़ना मिले दूर पड़ेंगे जाए पत्ता बोला वृक्ष से वृक्ष बोला पत्ते से सुन पत्ते मेरे भाई वृक्ष बोला पत्ते से सुन पत्ते मेरे भाई यही जगत की रीत है एक आए एक जाए ये ही ना ते गजब की ये बला की मेहरबानी ये ही ना ते गजब की ये बला की मेहरबानी मेरी खैरियत भी पूछी किसी और की जुबानी मेरी बेजुबानों से गिरे जो चंद कतरे मेरी बेजुबानों से गिरे जो चंद कतरे जो समझ सको तो आंसू न समझ सको तो पानी ये ना ये तेरा जब की ये बड़ा के मेहरबानी सुनी नहीं है हमको किसी और की जुबानी सुनी नहीं है हम 
को किसी और की जुबानी तेरी सुबह कह रही है तेरी रात की कहानी ये ना है तेरा सबकी ये बना कि मेहरबानी Thank you very much. 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 I, I I did get to spend little musical time with with great stalwarts like Ustad Amir Khan Sahab and and uh, uh, Pandit Jasraj and, and uh, Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi. I was very close to them and I spent a lot of time with them. But I had a a, had a very volatile life and uh, I was out on the streets and I earned a lot and spent a lot and got into all kinds of bad habits. Uh, but uh, um, then and I have been, let's say, I I met my wife. Uh, she's a a very stabilizing factor in my life. The good thing is that she doesn't give me any money uh, to spend, and and uh, so uh, uh, she she doesn't. No, she's so I, you. Everyone needs an anchor. The good thing about my life is is I have an she and my kids to a certain extent uh, to to get a home. So once I have a home which I love coming back to, my travel becomes much easier. So. Uh, I have some friends who've been instrumental and worked uh, very hard to, to, but I often, Parveen, I tell people, I said, she is my, she's one of my greatest strengths, but she's also my greatest weakness. So what do you do? You have to So this is a question from Rakesh Sarav. Uh, is there a next generation musician in your family? And there's another one from Tarini. If you had a, if you had a choice to choose any career path, what would you have chosen and why? Oh, the first question I do uh, my my they're just not sitaris. I've got a son and a daughter. My daughter is a painter and a graphic designer, and she's extremely talented. So that's what she does. And my son uh, creates music. He does background music uh, for for movies, and he plays the piano. So he's become more of a composer. Uh, I, I just want him to be what he wants to be because I never got that opportunity. So yes, there is another generation who uh, who are in music. And what was the second question? So sorry. She wanted dear. to know that if you had been given ah. a choice. Ah, I think lots of things. When you're young, you anything that 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 has a big image, film star, cricketer, um, uh, race car driver, <laughs> um, a rich industrialist. Well, kuch bhi hai. Ah, you know. And you have to take money and run away from this country, or what can happen? But, uh, but I realized, I realized very when I was very young that I am born to be a musician because that comes best to me, and I'm already way ahead of a lot of young people at that time. So this is something that I should pursue, and I'm glad I did because it gives me great happiness. Apart from the fact that it's my business and it's my job, it is also my extreme pleasure. I enjoy it. Thank you very, very, my very pleasure. much. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. Thank you very much.